So, the um, thing about Dr. Leach is very interesting. He is a doctor during World War I, and so he joins the American Expeditionary Force as an African American, as a first lieutenant. Most doctors were given an officer's rank. Unlike most black doctors, he gets promoted, and he becomes a captain. Um, when I said he served on the supervisor's board, I should say it was for a long term, too, 1928 to 1949, oh, except for a two-year gap. So he was continuously re-elected. He was also, and you have to remember, uh, take your political parties and switch them around, mm -hmm. he was on the Genesee County Republican Committee. You gotta remember, this mm -hmm. is before mm -hmm. the Civil Rights Act, so we gotta switch places there. Um, they lived on Wellington Street, later on Liberty. He had, of all these people, he's the first one that actually had a child. He and his wife had a son who was also a doctor. And I had never, I, I was shocked, I found out he had a doc, his son was also a doctor. Um, but he unfortunately did not live to be very old. He died very young, yeah. So, um, oh really? I mean, 2013, he was born in 51, so he got his, I didn't know when he became a, uh, an MD. Um, but um, Dr. Leach um, actually wrote a book about me, Harry College, uh, which I couldn't find any library owning. Yeah, 1941. Maybe the, maybe the college owns it, but that, that, I thought that was interesting. Um, huh? I don't know, I'll have to look. I just. I, I'll have to look, but a lot of times, you know, if he, if he might have had it, he might have self-published. Oh. Mm -hmm. He might have self-published. Um, and the Library of Congress doesn't keep everything. You send it, yeah. You don't have to. You don't have to, but a lot of people, they submit it for copyright purposes, um, but they don't keep everything, because think of what everything, think of what gets printed and what's copyrighted, and, yeah, but anyway, <laughs> so just a thought. Um, Floyd McCree, now th uh, hopefully we all know Floyd McCree. Um, so first African-American appointed mayor of Flint, and then he is Afri actually the first African-American to be elected to a countywide position in Genesee County, becomes Registrar of Deeds. Um, he was on the Urban League Board, he was president of the PTA, the VFW, he was actually also on the County Board of Supervisors, uh, the Flint City Council, and he was the first African American to be elected to the Flint City Council. Which I thought, that's interesting. An African American can get elected to the County Board of Supervisors in 1929, but it's not until 1956 that we, 1958, sorry, 1958 that we get someone on Flint City Council that's African American. So that's almost 30 years later. You can be on the county white board, but the city is a little more uh, resistant. Um, we all, everybody, I think, knows about Mr. McCree, kind of quiet. Um, they named the building after him. I wonder how many younger people don't know anything about him. Do they? Probably don't know. Oh, yeah. don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, we do a really hard, uh, horrible job of uh, telling our own history, even um, just in general, let alone African American specific. Um, but I thought, you know, here's another person that really is interesting, did wonderful things, wasn't a grandstander, uh, was one of the reasons the Fair Housing Act went through in Flint, and it was, we were the first medium-sized Michigan city to get it, and, um, and it's, because of him, and he even had Governor Romney come to Flint and tell people they need to vote yes on this and pass this because it's the right thing to do. Um, and then um, I didn't know him. I knew his son Melvin, who worked, you know, who later became Register of Deeds. Boy, he was just so low key. You know, never raised his voice. Low key. If you went in the Registrar of Deeds office and they were busy, he came up and worked for counter and helped you. Mm -hmm. um, Most African Americans during that period that were uh, statute 
who are all white. They were all weak people. They were not people who wanted to be out in front. They were happy to do what they felt was right. Stand in here, and they'll let you stay here. Yeah, it's all about people too. You can't be too loud and too boisterous. Who's that? You know. Oh, the whole angry yeah. black woman. Exactly. Angry, angry, angry black woman. But they carry big sticks when they need to. Exactly. Yeah, as they should. Oh, I think I should say, Miss uh, Miss Coles was also the first African American woman to be the president of the Michigan Library Board of Trustees. Yeah, I forgot about that, and I had to have one to check and make sure. She wasn't the first African American. She was the first African American woman. So, um, so just to let you know, we got about a half hour left. Got about a half hour left. So you decide with your stack there. <laughs> well, does anybody have somebody they want to ask about? And I'll see if I have something on them, rather than me just keep going. Well, well, I, I figured now. Well, I figured now we're, we're about tied. We, we, well, we did. We did two guys in four. How about Mr. Johnson? Mr. Johnson, the director. Mr. Johnson. Of. Flint. Director of what? Of the St. John Center. Oh, that I don't know. Oh, you might have been in the Oh, I probably. Something I did want to say though. Um, when Barbara and uh, Donna asked me to do this, they said, oh, you know, first person born, black person born at Flint, first person, black person graduated from Flint schools. And I thought, well, you know, uh, that's interesting. And um, there's a problem with that um, because most people say that uh, Nancy West, who was the founding uh, layperson for Quinn Chapel, her son, Sidney, was the first black person born at Flint. That's what I'd heard forever. Yeah. I, I know somebody that will argue you down <laughs> and in, in your face and tell you that's wrong. And the worst part of it is you can't prove it yeah. because not everybody has a birth certificate. Right. And with Nancy West's family, if you've ever seen, uh, Quinn Chapel has this really lovely photograph of all these people standing in front of the church. And I think it's the third bishop of the AME came to Flint for a visit. And so they're all in front of the church, and they're all decked out in their Sunday best. And uh, Miss Coles had a copy of the picture, so we blew it up really big. And other than the fact that some woman has a stuffed chicken on the top of her head, it's a hat. It's her hat. It's her hat. You know, and it's a stuffed chicken. Because Miss Coles said, oh my God, is that really what I think it is? And I said, yeah, it's a chicken. And so we blew that up big so she could see it. Most of the people in the photograph um, would have no trouble passing. They're very um, light complected, very fair, and Nancy West, her husband Jeremiah, he's always listed on the census as Negro or black. Nancy, however, is occasionally listed as white, and so are her children. And then, and I find that it was very true for a lot of the African American families that went to Quinn, and it's not until Quinn Chapel starts that all of a sudden people go, oh, I didn't know they were black. Because are you going to ask somebody? Probably not. And on the census, the directions for the census taker, you are to look at them and if the father is black, the children are black, unless they're Asian. You know, so if you married an Asian woman, then the children go. But the whole thing is, but in, in, in any other case, uh, if your father is black or your mother is black, you're black. But in, in other cases, it's what your father is. Mm -hmm. um, but my guess is that a lot of those people in Flint, they're very fair. No one bothered to ask. There wasn't really a black neighborhood back then because there's not enough to bother with. And um, am I going to say? The bishop came in and uh, he owned a minister there for Quinchap. Uh -huh. Quinchap gave me because of the Yeah. So. I did find several of Nancy West's grandchildren on their marriage licenses and everything. It will say white. And then some of them, somebody went back later and drew a line through it and put colored. But even on the census, they're dead. So how do you know who 
who's the first black child? Mm -hmm. Who's calling who, right? Oh. Now, as far as the first African American to graduate from, we only have one high school, it would be Flint High School, and it would have been downtown where the parking ramp is over by the federal building. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you have the, you know, it used to be the uh, Elks Hall, and you got the parking ramp and the federal building. Okay, that's what took up the whole block. The yearbooks don't start till like 1890 something, and then I could go through, and if she is, and it's probably going to be a girl, because more women graduated from high school than boys, because boys have to go out and get a job. But I can't say that because there are graduating classes from 1860 something onward, and who's to say that one of those young ladies is not African American? Uh, I would have to go through and have to try and find something on every single one of them until I hit gold, and then I still could be wrong. So I really don't know who the first African American uh, to graduate from Flint High School. I still like the Sydney West story just because the whole Nancy West thing is really, it's a nice, they're, they're first for many things. Mm -hmm. So Nancy West's um, one daughter, she's married several times and she marries her second husband in the artist family and George Artis is the first African American to run for a countywide office in Michigan, or in the city of Flint, rather, for the county. And he runs for, I believe it is, uh, Registrar of Deeds, and he runs as a socialist. <laughs> it is the 20s, so he had a snowball's chance, and he did not win. But I mean, it's the first time that on the countywide ballot, we had an African American, and it's George Artis. And I thought, um, the Artises were a very uh, interesting family because they're here early and they're, uh, they have a craft. They're, they're carpenters mm -hmm. and highly skilled. They work on a lot of the, when they used to have the big houses down Kersley Street, they did the finishing work. They didn't do the rough work, they did the finishing oh, work. Yeah. So they're doing the paneling yeah. and the finer things. So these are people who actually know what their, their finished carpenters So, um, yeah, and they have some money uh, because I noticed that they, when uh, one of the artists gets quite ill, where do they go to? The hospital, Ann Arbor. Whoa. Yeah. He, his wife dies in Ann Arbor. Um, she starts out here in Hurley and ends up in Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. So obviously they have the wherewithal oh. to to take to do the to pay the bill and go. So um, that's one of the other the things. So if we want to say who's the first African American uh, faculty member at U of M Flint, it's Dr. Love. It's mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that's easy because. There's not very many, there's only like five or six faculty members, and it's Dr. Loving. Um, and then Pamela Loving did our uh, did a talk on her dad for uh, MLK Day here uh, several years ago, mm -hmm. and she talked about her father and how he had actually gone and been the first African American to give the uh, commencement address at Carmen Ainsworth, and how the school board members escorted him into the graduation because people threatened to kill him. And it was the, the late 50s. So um, that's another first, Dr. Yeah. Loving. Um, but, you know, that just gives you some idea of. Um, what about the mayor's father, Karen Weaver's father? Dr. Williams. Dr. Williams is the first African American to be on the Flint School Board. He is also the first African American from Flint have a school named after him, which is now closed, of course. Um, and he was the first African American to actually have a position on the board other than trustee. He became treasurer. So Mrs. Harris, though, is the first African American to be the president of the Flint School Board, so Helen Harris. And she's also the first woman to be elected, first African American woman to be elected to the school board. Um, but Dr. Uh, I see it as Wendell Williams, but his real first name is Thomas. So he's either T. Wendell or just Wendell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's Thomas. Um, another family um, that was highly educated, his father was an AME minister. Uh, so they went to Vernon Chapel. Um, he was born in South Carolina. Uh, and then he, of course, dies at a conference down in Hollywood, Florida, uh, where he had gone out for a, because. Uh, Back then, Flint Schools owned my College because it wasn't my College, it was 
Flint community, Flint College, Flint Junior College, and the school board uh, ran that, and he was uh, on the committee for the college. He was also a graduate of Meharry Medical School in 1956, and he had also gone to Detroit College of Law. He didn't get his uh, uh, he didn't get his JD, but he did also go to uh, U of M and was a pharmacist before he became an MD. Uh, so he was. His wife, Marion Coates, the piano teacher from uh, Jenny Jones, uh, she was the first African American classroom teacher in a Flint school in 1943. And she was at Fairview, which was sort of like the. Um, Mrs. Coates? Or was she Miss Coates then? Or she was. Yeah, she was Miss Coates then. So, yeah, it's amazing how it's, it's a very, it seems like it's a very small group. And they all, they're in the same sororities, they go to the same churches, they're intermarried. It's not, but Flint isn't a majority black city back then. And uh, Flint is, even when it was bigger, everybody always knew everybody, you know. What's it, seven degrees of separation, but in Flint it's not that. It's like only three or four, really, when you start talking to someone. Everybody knows everybody. So, um, Marion Coates was Wendell Williams wife, and that's Karen Weaver's parents. So her parents are two firsts, and then she gets to be a, a first. Right. She gets to be the first <clears throat> woman and the first African-American woman to be elected mayor of Flint. So that's kind of like, got a little ball rolling there, so the bar is set high for her children. Um, yeah, so I thought that was, it's, it's kind of interesting that um, maybe it's, um, what you're brought up to, you know, environment. Your, the environment, your parents expect certain things, mm -hmm. yeah. or, and you see, yeah. they have done this, so you're, right. yes. You can't, you can't be it if you don't see it. Right. So, yeah. so I'm living the next to a banker, lawyers, and nuclear physicists, I'm thinking that's, that's a possibility. Yeah. Come on. It's normal. It's normal. Yes. yes. So if, that, if that's what you see around you, then, you would you think well of course I could do that but if I see the cameras and just totally our school the schools are falling down if I see just potholes and all these kind of things then I'm going to be feeling hopeless you know because again our, we are products of our mm -hmm. our conditioning our cultural conditioning and our environments it's really serious because this 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 proves it more than anything well I think too that. When you, if the people that came here in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and even up in the 60s, Flint is growing. Mm -hmm. You know, at one time we were the second largest, we were bigger than Grand Rapids, right. and then we start to drop. But even into the early 70s, it's still a hopeful place. Mm -hmm. It's a place where people can come and you can make a decent living and support your family and live in a decent house and your kids can go on and aspire to do something more. Mm -hmm. um, I, many, many people in Flint history, they, their parents start out working in the factories and they become doctors, lawyers, dentists, mm -hmm. real estate agents. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's a stepping stone. So each generation is improving. And I think that's, we're not a place of hope right now because there are no jobs, and it's like every time Flint seems to somebody comes along and kicks you in the yeah. teeth. Yeah. And so, just when it seems like just when it seems like things are getting better, the housing crises and property values take the tumble. And just like when it seems we're recovering from that, and then the water, which is not going to be fixed <coughs> probably as quickly as the housing crises. And so it's just like one thing after another, and Flint really doesn't need any more uh, kicks, in the teeth. Mm -hmm. kicks in the teeth of foot on their face.